Hello Internet, I'm your only mate, and time to talk about another episode of Ruby Volume 9 Beyond. This time we're focusing mostly on Jean and how he functions uh, after the events of the Ever After. Before I talk about this episode, I want to comment on something. And it's a reaction from the subset of the fan base, which is upset whenever Jean gets, like, noteworthy screen time in anything. Like, I noticed it in Ice Queendom a little bit in Volume 9, but nowhere near as uh, vocal. And suddenly here when the thumbnail was revealed. And I'll be honest, I never really got it. Much like how I never understood uh, what some people think of Jean. And that is the idea that he's a self-insert for Miles, so that he can get with the girls. To anyone who actually believes that, I have a question for you which can be best described by this clip from South Park. Are you high or just incredibly stupid? Yeah, if that were the goal, then the show would be very different. So anyway, start of the episode, and we see a shot of vacuo, and... Man, uh... Looks very different from how I imagined it in the books. I don't know why. For some reason, when I thought of Shade Academy, I was thinking of a very, very tall tower. Like, that's what I envisioned for some reason, like... When I was when I was going through the books, so how shade actually looks threw me for a loop. I mean, it did at the end of volume nine, but we get a much better shot of it here. So, yeah. Well, while Jean's thinking of starting a journal, and you know, not the not the worst idea for you, buddy. And now that I've been young and old and young again, it's not always easy to keep things in perspective these days. I don't even know where to begin with how to talk about that. Like, on one hand it's messed up, but on the other hand, isn't it like everyone's dream? Like, the second half of it. But we also get to see uh, Jean back with his team, and they're just running around, having a good time. And we find out that Nora likes to tell people that Jean is the rusted knight. And they look at her like she's a weirdo. Well, okay, specifically, like, it's an inside joke that they just don't have any idea about. But honestly, if someone walked up to me and told me that their friend was, like, Luke Skywalker or something... I'd probably look at them very weirdly, too. Jean's having some time, uh, wondering, like, who he is now. And spend some time with the person he thought could best relate. Oscar, or... Ozpin, and I'm gonna be honest, this is the most unsettling part. Because, honestly, listening to him? It's hard to tell, like, is it Oscar or Ozpin that Jean is talking to? And given what we found out from the epilogue animatic, that both are trying to fight the merger off as best they can... I'm worried. I gotta give mad kudos to Aaron, just... Like... It's really unclear when you listen to it, and... It's what makes it so unsettling to listen to, but also intriguing at the same time. I don't know how to describe it. Especially given that he says he's been the subject of fairy tales himself, and when Sean corrects him, saying, You mean... Ozpin, right? Well, this happens. Believe me, I know what that's like. I've been the subject of a couple of fairy tales myself. You mean Ozpin has, right? Of course. <laughs> um. Those two are on the cusp of full merging, and I don't like it. I want them to get separated so Oscar can have his own life back. Anyway, aside from that, uh, he tells Jean to just think back to his time in the Ever After and focus on the positive in a way. As a way to help remember what everything is for and, you know, 
rewrite the story a little bit. So he thinks back to Alex and Lewis, and um, they're from Vacuo. And now I'm also wondering, and okay, this is something that was never explored in Volume Nine. How the hell did they get in the ever after in the first place? How did that happen? Because we know how Team Ruby and John got there. So... What happened to these two? Aside from that, we do get this cute scene of them at the Garden Acre. I... I remember the first time we tried to shop at the Garden Acre. They didn't have days of the week, so they invented one. Splatter Day, just for us humans. Splatter Day? I don't know why I like that so much. Also, is it morbid that when I hear Splatter Day, that just makes me think of getting a splatter spree in Halo? Maybe we should move on and not think about that bit too much. And there's a farmer's market where you buy these adorable farmers that grow food for you for a while. Which is pretty cute. They're sitting around the campfire, and Alex and Lewis are just amazed by Jean's story and how he's from the future. And while he is telling them about his mistakes and adventures he'd been on, he sees his team, and I knew it was coming the moment they showed Nora, showed Ren. They go and show Pura, and it makes my heart hurt. I love this show, but sometimes the things they do, it really is like, right in the feels. Anyway, Jean comments how he sees those same campfires around Vacuo every night and just wonders what everyone's saying and all the hope that they're putting on this last battle. He asks if Oscar slash Osborne thinks they're even going to make it. And I don't know what uh, I would say in that scenario. Also, there's a couple ways I can take this. One is just Jean asking, like, as in, like, the plot of the show, which, okay, yes, like, the good guys are gonna win somehow. Like, I seriously doubt Ruby is gonna end with, like, oh, everyone dies, the end. The other way I can take it is... Are we even going to make it to see that battle? Like, is, is Ruby going to find a new home? Which, I'm still confident and hopeful that it will. And we will see the end of the story uh, at some point. That being said, if it's picked up by another studio and they immediately decide we're going to reboot this thing or fix it, then I'm probably not going to watch it and I stand by that. Okay, mild tangent aside. Oscar slash Ozpin, well, just says this. Around that campfire. <laughs> Did it matter? No. No, I guess it didn't. <laughs> and that's the episode. So it is really nice to see Jean with Ren and Nora again, like just having a laugh and, you know, finding out how is he going to go forward, like with the whole Rust at Night thing. Who he is now, and just how unsettling it is uh, hearing Oscar slash Ozpin and not really knowing uh, who's currently occupying the body right now, or if they've merged, if they're on the cusp of it. Um, I have worries, but yeah, solid episode, and 
We still have two left. Uh, I have no idea what they're going to be about. I have a couple hopes. But, I mean... I'll, I'll, I'll be happy with whatever group you do. So yeah, let me know your thoughts on this episode. I'm just going to go ahead and wrap this up. So thank you for watching, all of that stuff. And here is my Weiss outro. Bye. Thank you for watching Your Only Mate. Tune in next time.